Next thing you know, one of the admin staff has the news website open, a very obvious image of an entire bus on fire with a bunch of kids in our school uniform standing in front of it. Our late slip for class read, school bus blew up. Teachers of Reddit, what was the best excuse for being late that turned out to be true? A kid's apartment burned down overnight. He was a little late, but still came. He was 16-ish, he could have helped them sort things out. Education was more important to him because app exams were coming up. Told me he got pulled over by the cops for wobbly driving on his bike, and they thought he was drunk. Turned out he was just dodging all the slugs on the street. One of my organ students told me he was late arriving for his lesson because he got stuck behind a lengthy funeral procession en route to the cemetery. I knew he was telling the truth because I had played the organ for the service earlier that morning, and the church was packed. In my hometown if you walked into anywhere late and said the phrase, sorry, grain train, you were never challenged. It was extremely common for 50 plus carriage trains to run through the middle of town. We have the same thing in my hometown except it's, the bridge was up. That bridge is notorious for not following a schedule and always being up when you're in a hurry. This happened to me as a pupil, a very quiet, unassuming kid in our class came into German with about five minutes of the class left. We went to a Catholic school and the teachers were all quite strict and intimidating. Classes were usually silent, especially in junior school. When this boy came into class at the end of the lesson that day, the door flew inwards with such force that the teacher gave an audible gasp. It had been raining heavily outside, his hair was plastered to his forehead. His blazer was dripping and sodden. He had mud caked into his trousers up to his knees, and he was breathing heavily. The teacher exclaimed, Brendan. What happened? We all stared up at him in shocked silence. This quiet, unassuming little boy let out a big sigh and just said, I took a shortcut. And went straight to his seat. That line became iconic in our school for years afterwards. Not me but in my class. This was in college, student turned in work late after not showing up for two classes. Two classes amounted to a full week so it was noticeable. Professor looked at him and said, I hope somebody died for you to be this late. Does my dad count? Honestly I've always heard you can hear a pin drop and never really thought anything of it, but yeah you could hear a pin cut through the air after that. A kid missed my first period class one morning, but was in school later that day. When I asked him why he hadn't arrived in time for my course, he said his cow was birthing its calf that morning, so he'd picked being in the barn over English. Made sense to me. His essays weren't going to win any ribbons at the county fair, but his calf could. We had an exam in my class and the teacher got a message from a student saying that he was going to be late because his car had a flat tire, the student was known to party. The teacher didn't think it could be true, so as a joke the teacher asked him to bring the tire back. He brought the flat tire back in the middle of the exam. Needless to say, the professor didn't expect that. When I was in college, my psychology professor told us that the only excuse for being late was a funeral procession any other reason, you wouldn't be allowed to come in. A few weeks into the semester, I was headed from one building to another, which involved crossing the main road. Lo and behold, there was one very long funeral procession going by. I got a short video of it as proof, then stood on the sidewalk to let it go by. Unfortunately, the procession made me five minutes late to class. I knocked on the door, and the professor came over to start to tell me off. I showed her the video. Well I'll be damned, come on in. MTV paid me $50 to fill my backpack with cement and carry it around for the day. I accepted that excuse. Student later regretted it, as a replacement backpack and college textbooks far exceeded $50. But he got his moment of fame and I didn't penalize him for his tardy. Gotta live a little. Edit, someone found a newspaper article on this. Turns out it was $200. He earned $100 for the first day and $100 when he returned the next day. I remembered $50, but it was 19 years ago. So ha, I was right to believe him. 
He still lost all his stuff, thanks cement, and I remember him telling me it wasn't worth it. She had to take her sister to school and drive her mom to rehab. She was always late to class because her mom just wanted to sleep in. Problem was if the mom was late or did not go she would have violated her probation and gone to prison. I never marked her late. If she missed anything important she could come in at lunch or after school to make it up. My best friend and I used to roller skate to school and one day we both forgot to put our shoes in our backpacks. So we skated to the vice principal's office and got to skip the first period to go home for shoes. We stopped at Taco Bell on the way back for breakfast, because we figured we were already excused. I was one of about 20 kids who were late to school. We showed up at the school office as a group and when questioned why we were late, we said. The school bus blew up. They questioned, so the engine blew up. The kids, no, the whole bus, in flames. It blew up. There was much conference between the teachers, all of them thinking we embellished the story. Next thing you know, one of the admin staff has the news website open, a very obvious image of an entire bus on fire with a bunch of kids in our school uniform standing in front of it. Our late slip for class read, school bus blew up. Literally today, the child missed my first hour class, notes said car accident on the way to school and would be coming late. Kid comes for the second hour, has pictures on his phone of the rollover accident. WTF, kid, go home. Rest. Take care of yourself. Edit, I have another one, although this one happened to a classmate when we were in college training to be teachers. She missed a really important class, came for just the last 10 minutes or so because her neighbor knocked on her door while in active labor asking for help, a little while before she was supposed to leave for class. Classmate walked back to the neighbor's house with prego neighbor, and delivered her baby in the living room while on the phone to 911. Paramedics came, and mom and baby were fine, but the classmate needed to go home and shower, change first, because she was covered in blood. I'm an English professor, and one year a pretty good student showed up without one of his two major term papers. He explained that his safe had been stolen by a contractor who was working on their house. His laptop was in the safe, and that's where his paper was. I genuinely believe him because he was a really good student. Then over the next few weeks, he started to show up to class looking very tired. He said that he was on a hunt for the person who stole his safe, and he was spending late nights with his cousin driving around looking for the guy because they knew his van. Now, the student and his cousin were both recently back from tours in Iraq and had seen combat experience. They wanted to find the guy to beat the daylight out of him and get the safe back because his wife's wedding ring was in the safe as well as a bunch of cash. He rewrote the paper and turned it in, apologetic that it wasn't up to his usual quality, but he still kept coming to class looking like he hadn't slept. After a little while he came very happily to my office hours, and he reported that he found the guy after a long search. It involved breaking into a meth den shaking people down with baseball bats, and even bribing some prostitutes. He said that they found the guy's van at a Taco Bell after getting a tip from a prostitute, and they cornered him and waited for the police to come. I read in the news that he had in fact done a citizen's arrest, and stopped the guy at a Taco Bell, and that they ended up calling in the secret service, because he used the cash that he stole from the safe to buy a bunch of counterfeiting equipment. The Secret Service apparently investigates counterfeiting, so the whole investigation happened because this guy who I dubbed the White Shaft tracked the scumbag down through the bad side of town late at night to get a wedding ring, some cash, and his research paper back. It all turned out to be true. He got the ring and the laptop back. I gladly accepted his original paper, and it got a much higher grade than the rewrite. Edit, a couple people asked for more details, so here are a few more. I can't recall the year this happened, but it was the height of the war with the US and Iraq. My student had enrolled in the army right after 911 on the same day as his cousin. They were both just out of high school and enrolled due to patriotism and frustration. According to him, when he started his vigilante spree, he actually went inside of a house used by meth addicts to try and find the guy. 
They shook the house down with baseball bats and forced everyone out into the street. When the cops showed up, they told my student how dangerous this was and not to do it again. Then, they gave him the cards and said, but call us if you do. They shook down at least two other drug dens, and the same cop was waiting outside both times to arrest people since he didn't need to get a search warrant as everyone was outside now at the point of two baseball bats. I told my student how dangerous this all was, and he was very John Wick about getting his wife's wedding ring back. Also, I tried to find a link to the story, but it was a small story, and the Googles aren't being very helpful, especially since I can't remember the year. Like and subscribe, for more funny, interesting, and scary r slash ask reddit videos.